Hi friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Factory UPSC. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss the sixth chapter of class seven geography, and the name of chapter is Natural Vegetation and Wildlife. Before going to the classes, those who does not subscribe to my channel, subscribe now, like the video now itself, and share it with your friends. Let's move to the chapter. First of all, in this chapter, there it discusses the Sarima and her journey. It's something like a story, and it's not so important to us. So let's look into the content portion of this chapter itself. Okay, we can find there is a point that there is a close relationship between height and uh, the relation that means the height of the land and the character of the vegetation. With the change in the height, the climate changes and the change the natural vegetation. That means the height of the land affects the climate of the vegetation. And with the change in this height and the character, there is a whole relationship that means a whole change in the vegetation itself. Okay. The growth of the vegetation depends on the temperature and the moisture and it also depends on the factors like the slope and the thickness of the soil. So there are some five important factors which led to the uh, differentiation in the vegetation and this temperature, moisture, slope and the thickness of the soil itself. The type and the thickness of the natural vegetation varies from different places towards other places. The natural vegetation is generally classified into three broad categories and it's very important okay that you have to keep in your mind that according to the natural vegetation that it is classified into three types they are forest grasslands and shrubs okay first of all we have to we can see what is forest the forest which grows where the temperature and the rainfall are plentiful to support the tree cover depending upon these factors the dense and the open forests are grown okay the forest what is forest means the forest means a place where the trees and the plants grow abundantly due to its temperature and the rainfall and there will be difference in the change in the shape of the forests as well so let's see what is grasslands the grasslands means which grows in the region of the moderate rain so the grasslands grows in the region of moderate rain and the shrubs means the thorny shrubs and the shrubs grows in the dry region. So the dry region is a place where these shrubs grows. Okay. So, so these are the main three types of vegetation. And the changes in the type of natural vegetation occur mainly due to because of the changes in the climatic condition. So change in the type of vegetation is mainly due to change in climatic condition okay so let's subdivide uh, let's uh, see the details of the subdivided vegetation such as forest grasslands and shrubs okay first of all we can see what is forest and what are the main uh, types of forests are okay first of all there is tropical evergreen forest these forests are also called as tropical rainforests. Here in the figure we can find there is a tropical evergreen forest. It's beautiful because it's always green. Okay. These thick forests occur in the regions near the equator and close to the tropics. These regions are hot and receive very heavy rainfall throughout the year. As there is no particular dry season, the tree do not shed their leaves altogether. This is the reason they are called as evergreen. The thick canopies are closely packed together. It does not even allow the sunlight to penetrate into, into these forests even during the daytime. The hardwood trees like rosewood, ebony, mahogany, etc. are common here. So what is tropical evergreen forest? As the word suggests, they are found in the equator regions and there is a it's an area where we can experience high amount of rainfall and humidity and uh, there are thick canopies which does not allow even the sunlight to pass into the air uh, during in the land during the daytime and it is called as tropical evergreen forest metro uh, there is a box we can read that tropical evergreen forest in brazil is also enormous that it is like lungs of the earth okay so the important tropical rainforest is located at the Brazil and we can find this Amazon, it's Amazon, it's Amazon forest. 
so why it is called as langs can you tell why it's called as langs as we know the lungs what is the main duty of lungs it provides us oxygen okay so as a result as a like that the amazon forest also provide that means the the major amount of the oxygen donated to the earth is amazon river and below that we can also read that anaconda one of the world's largest snake is found in the tropical rainforest and um, it can kill and eat the large animals such as crocodile okay so we, we have also see the movies of anaconda and it's a huge enormous snake and which is here which is capable to kill even the large animals such as crocodile okay so let's see the next type of topic and it is called as tropical deciduous forest the tropical deciduous are monsoon forest they are found the la in the larger part of india mainly and uh, northern australia and the central america so the deciduous forests are found in northern in the india northern australia central america these regions experience seasonal changes trees shed their leaves in dry season to conserve water so it's a important topic it's a important concept that the tree sheds in the tropical deciduous forest to conserve water the hardwood trees found in these forests are sal teak neem shisham redwood trees are extremely useful for making furniture and uh, transport and uh, the constructional materials okay and um, the main animals are tiger lion elephants langur monkeys and the common animals of this region so we can find the picture of tropical deciduous forest there is a tiger and the golden langur okay so let's see the next that is the temperate evergreen forest and the main features of temperate evergreen forests are they are located on the mid latitudinal coastal regions and they are commonly found in the eastern margins of the continent that means on the eastern margins of the continents we can find this type of temperate evergreen forests in the southeast usa south china southeast brazil they comprise both hard and the soft wood trees like oak pine eucalyptus etc so we can find the picture of temperate evergreen forest below there are elephants the golden langurs etc in these regions okay it's very important to know the countries which belongs to this forest that means the temperate forests are belongs to uh, south china then southeast asia likewise we have to prepare a chart on this it will be very useful for to revise the exam revise in exams as well as other competitive exams okay so let's see the next concept that is a temperate deciduous forest as we know towards a higher latitudes there are more temperate deciduous forests these are also found in northeastern parts of usa china new zealand chile and also found in coastal regions of western europe they shed their leaves in the dry season and the common trees are oak ash beech etc deer fox wolves are the animals commonly found in these regions and the birds such as pheasants monals are also found in these regions we can find a picture of pheasant monal and also the temperate deciduous forest okay so let's see what is mediterranean vegetation we have already learned that the most of the east and the northeast of the margins of the continents are covered with the temperate evergreen and deciduous trees the west and the southwest margins of the continents are different they have margin they have mediterranean vegetation and it is mostly found in the areas around the mediterranean sea in the europe africa asia hence the name is the kind of vegetation is also found outside the actual mediterranean regions in the california in usa southwest africa then southwestern america southwest australia and the regions are marked for hot dry summer the citrus fruits like orange figs olive grapes are commonly found and cultivated here because people have removed the natural vegetation in order to cultivate what they want to and there is is in much wildlife here so mediterranean vegetation is not experiencing so much uh, wildlife okay 
uh, read that we can read that box mediterranean trees adapt themselves to dry summer with the help of their thick barks and the wax coated leaves with the help which help them to reduce water transpiration mediterranean regions are well known as orchids of the world for their fruit cultivation okay so these are some important concepts which have to deal with uh, this mediterranean vegetation so let's see what is coniferous forest in the higher latitudes that between between 50 degree and 70 degree the northern hemisphere the spectacular coniferous forest are found and these are called as taiga and these forests are seen in the higher latitudes and these are the trees and then the main trees were found here is salima where the himalaya in abundance they are tall soft food evergreen trees and the woods of these trees are very useful for making pulp and which is used for the manufacturing of the paper and the newsprint so the trees found in this coniferous forest are useful for making the paper and the newsprints match boxes picking boxes are also made from these soft foods Chir, pine, cedar are the most important variety of the trees found in these forests. Okay, and the main animals were silver fox, mink, polar bear are the common animals found here. So the taiga means uh, that is that what we have discussed that the coniferous forest is always called as taiga. Okay, it's also an important point that the coniferous forest is also known as taiga forests okay the word taiga pure means untouched in the russian languages so taiga is today from the russian language which means untouched okay so here we can find the picture of coniferous forest and the snow covered coniferous forest so let's uh, see then the second topic that is the grasslands so let's look into the concept of the grassland the tropical grasslands are the first type and these occur on the either side of equator and extended till the tropics these vegetations grow in the areas of moderate and the low amount of rainfall the grass can grow very tall about three to four meter height the savanna grasslands of africa are the types the elephants zebras giraffe deer leopards are the common animals found in the tropical grasslands the tropical grasslands are found in the areas where the moderate climate the grass grows to the height of about three to four meter there are the common example is savanna grasslands in africa and the animals found were elephants zebra giraffe deer leopards are the common tropical animals found here okay so let's see the next uh, second type of grasslands that are temperate grasslands they are found in the mid latitudinal zones and its interior part of the continents usually grass here is short and nutritious wild buffalo bisons antelope are the common animals found here and the third one is thorny bushes they are found in the dry deserts like regions the, the tropic deserts are located on the western margins of the continent so the thorny bushes were found in the dry desert regions like the western part of these continents and the vegetation cover is scarce because of the scarcity of the rain and scorching heat okay so there is low vegetation due to the high high heat and low rain and um, we can find there are seven, several animals on this desert region such as kangaroo rats, camels, bactrician camels, etc. Such as, such as these organisms that means the wildlife is very limited in these regions. And uh, if you reach the polar region, you will find that the place is extremely cold and the growth of the natural vegetation is very limited here also. Only mosses, lichens and the small shrubs are found here. It grows during very short summer and it is called as tundra type of vegetation. So tundra type of vegetation means the polar vegetation. Okay, don't forget the point. This vegetation are found in the polar areas of Europe, Asia and the North America. The animals have the thick fur, thick skin to protect themselves from cold and the climatic condition. The main animals are walrus, seal, musk, oxen, arctic owl, polar bear, etc. Okay, so uh, these are the things and uh, there is a box which is very important for your uh, competitive exams. So look here. Grasslands are known by the different names in different regions. It's very important because it is usually you asked in the, uh, in the UPS exams. 
so the tropical grasslands comprises of east africa that is savanna brazil that is campos venezuela that is lanos okay so uh, tropical grasslands are east africa savanna brazil campos venezuela lanos then the temperate grasslands comprises of argentina that is pampas argentina pampas north america prairie north america prairie south africa veld south africa veld then central asia that is steppe so central asia is steppe regions then the australia that is down so australia that is down okay so it's very important i repeat on more east africa savanna brazil cambos venezuela lalos argentina pampas north america prairie south africa south africa veld central asia steppe and uh, australia that is down okay there is a picture of walrus polar bear and seal uh, which we included in this tundra type of vegetation so don't forget the point that is a tundra type of vegetation is also called as polar vegetation so these are the main concepts which we are going to which is included in this chapter it's very simple chapter as well as very useful for your upsc exams because in the geography portion it's very important so make clear this chapter i hope you enjoy this class if you like like the video share it with your friends thank you